Hello? You know, I'm trying these new earbuds. Uh, they don't sound great, so I think I'm going to dispense with them. And go back to being wired. Because... That technology is not working for me. Of course, the wire's gone missing. Let's try these guys. Hopefully. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Grace. I'm just having fun with the, the old uh, technology, as per usual. See if um, you've probably seen these funky earphones I've had before. Want to see if... No, that doesn't sound great. Ugh. Things are wired and wireless. I just want to make sure that because there's quite a few instructions. Hey Beverly. Hi Lisa. I'm <laughs> Shh. I won't say anything, Jennifer. Don't worry. Don't worry. I think that being at work is really important for productivity. So if you're happy at work, you'll just do a better job. So my job is to make you happy at work. Tell the boss I said that. Yeah. <laughs> right, Grace. Hey, Beverly, how are you? Is the weather nice where you are? Sorry about my hair. I haven't had it cut since the beginning of lockdown. I think as an experiment, I was waiting to see if I could maybe grow it longer again. But you know, no, 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 I can't. It's tickling the back of my neck and it's just like mega bushy. So I thought this would make a good opportunity for before and after photos. My haircut is on Thursday, I can't wait. And I'll probably have it super short all over again. Hey Louise. Thanks for joining me. Jenny, you think it suits me longer? Mm. Oh, thank you, Grace. Rosemary says, I'm here till the Tesco delivery. I understand. In fact, I'm in the house by myself today and I've got a purse, frames and metalware delivery. So if the bell goes and the dog goes bonkers, I may have to leave and open the door because God, I have my metal bits. <sighs> Hey Sue, hey Kathleen, hi Rosemary, hello Benita, hey Mary, you're from Australia, amazing, what's the time in Australia, I'm not very good with my time zones, hello Joe. hi Denise, so have we used purse frames before, this is out of curiosity to see if it can be done, it can be done, I promise it can be done. Hi to you, Louise. Oh, DPD is here. DPD are amazing. And they, the men often wear shorts, it's, which I think is a bonus as far as I'm concerned. You go and answer DPD, Sue. We're not, not going to start anything just this second. So say hello to the DPD man. Give him my love. Grace, you haven't made one yet. I'm not surprised. I mean, the gluing, you know, when you when you sew everything all of the time, gluing fabric onto something else might seem a bit unnatural. Was that somebody knocking on the door now? <sighs> Horrible weather where you are, Louise. Oh, rubbish. Which part of the country are you in, Louise? It was, um, it's been pretty shaky in Brighton. For the end of July, it was a bit pants, but, um, I think we're making up for it now. It's quite sunny here. Anyway, just stay in. Just stay in and make something nice. I do that when it's sunny as well, to be honest with you. It doesn't seem to make any difference what the weather's like. I'll still, I'll still stay in and make something. Are any of you going to be making along? It is possible. Um, happy to go slow. I haven't set myself a time limit for this uh, video um, and I will put it on my YouTube, my um, You Handbag by Lisa Lam YouTube channel afterwards. So if anyone needs to go to answer the Tesco man or the DPD man, that's absolutely fine. 
Um, daughter from Keeley says, hi. Hello, Keeley. You're from South Yorkshire. Oh, nice. Beautiful part of the country. Beverly says, not made a purse before, but have all of the bits needed from you. Brilliant, brilliant. I will say, um, making purse frame purses is my absolute favorite thing to do because, um, well, everyone likes the satisfaction of being able to make something and finish it in a reasonably quick time. Um, it's lovely to have projects on the go. I'm one of those people that has got three things. I typically have three things on the go. One thing that I'm designing, a sample that I'm making for somebody or for work, and just something fizzy and fun for myself. And they all have staggered times, but one of them has to finish reasonably quickly because well, I just, I just have too many ideas. As soon as I start something, I almost want to finish it quickly so I can start something else. Are any of you like that? Oops, DPD, Jorks just walked into my hall without, ooh! <laughs> oh, no. oh! DPD walked into your hall without asking or knocking, Sue. That's a disgrace, ne and nearly let the dogs out. That is no good. I'm not gonna press C more. And they dropped the package. That's an outrage. Oh, I'm sorry you don't have a good DPD person, Sue. Uh, I hope you manage, I hope, and um, yeah, and I'm glad the dog didn't escape. Scoob, I've given him a massive chew uh, for this live, so he's got something to keep himself busy while I'm making something. Scoob is a runner. He, he, he's, a, he's an adolescent now, God bless him. He's the most, he's really affectionate and really playful and loves everyone to the point where if he sees anyone, he's got to go up, lick them and say, I love you. And as soon as the door is open and there's somebody on the street, that's it. That's me running around the block maybe once or twice trying to get him back while he does his social hellos, hellos. So yeah, we try not to let him out the door when your door is open. Uh, it's pronounced Kaylee. I'm very sorry, Louise. That is a very pretty name though. Hi, Angela. <laughs> She's got her lollipop ready. Awesome, like it. <laughs> and Rosemary has left the hubby putting the shopping away. Brilliant. That's what I like. I, I, I do all of the shopping at home. So I do, I do the recipes. Well, actually, I, I pretty much do all of the cooking because Alan, by his own admission, doesn't enjoy cooking at all. I really love it. But Alan is a very, very tidy person. He gets thrills from tidying up to the point where I'm definitely messier than I would be if Alan wasn't so tidy. So, uh, but I wouldn't let him put the washing away, uh, the, the shopping away. I wouldn't be able to find anything. He'd put it, the shopping away to, to the way it looks tidiest, but not logically. So mm, yeah, he, he's very tidy. I can never find anything, go figure. Kathleen says, hasn't used frames yet. You have several in the stash. You're going to have a go now. Oh, brilliant. That's what I love to hear. I, I'm going to try and make this as easy to follow for you as possible. So yeah, do let me know how you get on. Hello, gorgeous Laurie. So lovely to see you. Morning, beautiful yourself. <laughs> hey, Angela. Hello, Suzanne. Thanks. Not that you need any purse frame help, Suzanne Herbert. You're absolutely awesome at purse frame making. Maybe you should just join me and take over as my gorgeous assistant, or I'll be your gorgeous assistant. <laughs> Louise says, Kaylee is only 12, 13, another tea in the house, and smiling. Oh, is, is, is she an easy-ish teen, Louise, or is she going to be... I, I, don't, I wouldn't say... Mabes is going to be the easiest teen. I think we're going to have a barrel of laughs, but that said, I don't think she's going to be easy going. I don't think she'll be vanilla. I think it'll be more rocky road. <laughs> we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Hi, Lynn. Yes, when I'm excited, I wanted to make something. I want to get on with it and I'm impatient and things like cutting and I'm not going to do the seam more in case something goes missing. I'm exactly like you, Lynn. I'm just, 
I think we're just like a repository of new ideas and the whole process of making something makes you get, oh, I've just thought of something else. So I'll just hurry up with the thing that I'm making so I can make the new thing and not forget that new idea that I've just had. It's great, but it's also quite, oh, God, hands can't keep up. <laughs> so yes, I understand. Lynn says, same here. Don't let Peter put shopping away. <laughs> Probably. Probably, Lynn. I think we have made a rod for our backs. Alan is probably an amazing cook, but because the few occasions he's done it, he's just been so grumpy and we've eaten in a bit of a stony silence. I've just like, oh, for the love of God, I'll, I'll do the cooking. You enjoy doing the tidying up. And, and, and thus it's been for the last 20 odd years. I mean, I love cooking and everything, but every day? more or less every day. I could probably count the times he's cooked for me on both hands and both feet in 20 years. I know, I know. Thanks Valerie. I am looking, I'm looking forward to this too because making, like I say, the purse frames thing is my favourite thing to do. Louise says, I have a set of frames but no glue so just watching. Okay, okay, that's no problem at all. Shall I get started then? Um, because I don't want to, because this is going to go on YouTube as more of like um, an instruction video, um, this isn't going to be mega chatty. Um, I will go back and answer any big old questions later on, but I want this more to be a video where people can sit through and not have to fast forward too much of the chatty bits. So I'm going to if that's okay with you, I'm going to tip the camera. I'm going to start talking about the things that you need and then we'll get going. And I'm more than happy um, after I've made to have a chat with you and answer any questions you might have. That's if you've still stuck with me. So I'm going to kind of make a start now. Jenny's got her kit and she's raring to go. Awesome. Uh, Louise says she's got an easy teen up to now. And she loves musicals, sings all of the time. Brilliant. I bet you the singing keeps her chill. Sue says, easy teens, do they come in that flavour? <laughs> do you know what, Sue? I'm going to ask that question myself. She's only eight, but she is a force of nature. Right. Okay. 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 Right. Lovely catching up, but let's do more of the catching up at the very end. Now I'm going to start this. So this, this is based on the Easy Peasy Purse Kit 2 that I stock in my U handbag shop. And I've started making these kits um, that include the fabric, which is the um, PU Outer, because I've since discovered that the PU Outer, the PU fabric that I sell, doesn't interact badly with the glue. It's absolutely fine. And it makes a really, really lovely looking purse. So I'm going to show you what they look like. So look, ho, 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 don't they look nice? Okay, so this is the first one. This is the first easy peasy purse kit that I put in stock, all sold out. And this is the second one that I did, all sold out. And this one, this lilac lovely, I have just put in the shop and it's called So Lovely Lilac. And the reason it's called So, as in S-E-W, Lovely Lilac is, look at the lining, look at that. So it's got lilac tinted sewing reels, vintage sewing reels. So I'll talk more about where you can find the kits later. So this this is based on a um, six and a half, six by two and five inches frame. And this purse is called the Easy Peasy Two purse. And that's what we're going to be making today. Right, so this is what the pattern comes in. So in the pattern, you'll get the lining fabric, you'll get some fleece, you'll get the outer fabric and you'll get some cord which I will talk more about in a minute and you get the instructions. So the other things you'll need is this glue. 
I, sorry, it's probably back to front. It's a Facebook thing. I know this happens. I only ever use Gutterman HT2. You can get two types of Gutterman glue. One of them comes in a small plastic, sort of like a, um, a, a, a flexible plastic tube. That is the wrong glue. The Gutterman glue that you want comes in a metal tube. And when you take off the lid, it has a fine nozzle. And that is very, very important for reasons that I'm going to discuss with you later on. So I only, I only ever recommend this glue for purse frame making because it's got a super, super strong bond. It's never let me down. And you're also going to need a flathead screwdriver, a small one. And we want a small one because it'll be a finer tip and it's very good for pushing the um, fabric of the purse into the channel of the frame. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, Lisa, that, that just simply isn't a screwdriver, is it? Well, actually, it isn't. <laughs> actually, it's, this is a really funky tool that I got on holiday in Japan. And it, at one end, it's like um, a stiletto. And at another end, it's got like this flattened but and slightly sharp but not sharp tip which is just brilliant for purse frame making so I use this I use this instead of a flathead screwdriver I've never seen this kind of tool for sale in the UK so the next best thing is a flathead screwdriver for um, pushing your purse frame uh, pushing your your fabric purse into the purse frame the other thing that you'll need, because we're working with PU, we can't use pins to hold our fabric pieces together. We need sewing clips. Uh, all bag makers and dress makers should have sewing clips. I still do use pins on the odd occasion, but the lovely thing about sewing clips is you can put them on any fabric, including PU. And these ones have got a nice, strong grip and the last thing is a seam roller really very useful gadget to have use it all of the time you can now and I use it for flattening seams on PU you can use an iron on PU you can iron on the wrong side um, use an iron cloth as well and if you keep the iron moving, it is fine to iron on PU, but I need to flatten the seam on the right side of my PU, and you must never ever iron on the right side of PU. So this seam roller is a brilliant alternative that is very, very effective. Okay, so we've got, we've got our fabrics, we've got our PU, we've got the glue, we've got the clips, we've got our flathead screwdriver, we've got our scissors, now let's time hello helen thanks for joining me you haven't missed anything helen all i've done is i've just made a run through of the tools that we need so if you get a chance watch back the video um at the beginning and all i did was a rundown of all of the tools that we need none of which were particularly funky or exotic you're likely to have at home okay so the first thing that we're going to do sewing the purse together is super super quick and easy and I'm going to start by sewing the lining pieces together. So what I've done with my lining piece is I've cut the fabric out. Now I, I block fused the fleece onto the back of my fabric. And if you don't know what block fusing means, it's, hey Janice, thanks for joining us. What you block fusing means is you iron your interfacing or your fusible fleece or whatever fusible onto the back of your fabric before you start cutting your pattern pieces. And I, I always, always try to do this. So even if your interfacing piece is really large and your fabric is really, really large, what you can do is get your, get your pattern piece, put it on top of your fabric, which is on top of your interfacing, and then just cut general, just cut a general shape around your fabric and interfacing, and then iron your fleece or your interfacing or whatever onto the back of your fabric. Because not only do you save time from having to match your 
interfacing piece to the back of your fabric piece, the accuracy is second to none. You, you, can't, you can't get more accurate than cutting out your interfacing uh, and fabric piece when they've all already been fused together. So I completely advocate, you have to block fuse. It's the way forward. So yeah, that's, that's what I've done for both my lining pieces. What's the pushy in tool cord, says Alice. So this pushy in tool, I don't know if it's got a name, um, Alice, because I, I, I bought it in Japan. But you don't have to have one. A small flathead screwdriver is completely fine for the job. And it's what I used to use before I got one of these pokey tools. I've never seen this for sale in the UK sadly I, I got it somewhere I mean if, if I if I come across it you can bet your bottom dollar I'll post about it on Facebook and because it's brilliant but if you don't have one of these a small flathead screwdriver is perfect yes Lynn agrees block fusing is the way forward completely agree so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew my lining pieces together but only at the bottom edge so for me I'm pretty comfortable at um, just eyeballing it and not putting a clip in but I'm gonna just anyway for the sake of TV I'm just going to clip my pieces at the top so they don't go escaping and because it's um, just quilt weight fabric that I'm using all I'm going to do is stitch with a normal construction length of two and a half uh, and by the way if you're interested I'm using an 880 forward slash 12 needle throughout the project and of course I'm used a brand new one okay so I'm just going to go ahead and sew the pieces together now why did I switch my machine off? Oh, P.S. The seam allowances for the entire purse are a quarter of an inch. That's six mils. Okay, so quarter of an inch. You might be able to hear my dog nibbling on his um, super tough chew. That is one happy dog, I'm telling you. So... I'm using um, quilt weight fabric so it's absolutely fine to do some securing stitches and I'm just stitching the bottom edge at this point not the sides just the bottom edge right now okay and then when I've stitched the Sue wants to know what thread I'm using. I'm just using Gutterman, Sue. I'm just using a bit of um, Gutterman all-purpose. Lynn wants to know what is the fusible fleece. It's H640, Vileen H640. I only ever use um, uh, H640 Vileen fleece. And when I, when I do kits as well, I only ever include H640 because, well, it's dependable, the adhesive is brilliant. I just want a little bit of squish, but I want to be able to leave some of it in of the seams. Speaking of which, speaking of which, now, as you can see, I've just stitched the bottom edge seam. Be before I did that, what I forgot to instruct you to do was, now I don't know if you can, I'm just going to tilt there. Now, what I should have done before stitching this bottom edge was, I should have asked you just to trim a little bit of fleece from the sloped edges of the um, top edge of the fleece up here because for later on it's going to make our, our seams look neater at this part of the purse and trimming the fleece off is really easy to do and you're just trimming off approximately a quarter of an inch seam so I don't know if you can see, yeah, you should. You can clearly see the difference. I've just taken my scissors and it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of fuzz left behind on the fabric. Either way, it's still thinner than the rest of the body. 
and I'm just going to snip off at the same here just a little bit off the top approximately a centimeter it doesn't need to be exact it's not going to show but it will make a difference to the crispness of the seams at the top edge of the purse so you, yeah you can see that that's just been that's been given a little bit of a haircut there and you need to repeat that on all on the other three sloped edges like I say it doesn't need to be beautiful it doesn't need to be neat all you're doing is cutting off a little bit of the bulk and it's going to make your life easier later on there I haven't been beautifully neat doesn't matter just cutting up a bit of the bulk and then that's it there so you should be able to see I have cut things back a bit now and then we go to the machine and stitch the bottom edge together okay so I have just stitched the bottom edge together and I want to peel these this bottom edge seam apart and I could iron it but because we're filming on video I don't really want to stand up and leave the camera too much so I'm just going to get my seam roller and flatten the seam sorry if I don't catch all of your questions everybody um, as I was saying before I just want to make this video flow at a steady speed so that people who are watching later don't have to listen to loads of chit chat before I get to the next step I'm more than happy after the purse is finished to answer any questions at the end so that way that people who are watching later don't have to scroll too much up of too much of my yakking there so I've flattened that seam down and then the next thing that I want to do is stitch either side of the seam because a it looks gorgeous and b it ensures that your it, it ensures that the flat bottom like this is going to stay completely flat see look how nice that looks if I hadn't stitched those seams down you would just get a little bit of a concave here because what the fabric wants to do is to bulge out again but stitching either side of the seam makes that gives you a lovely flat surface and it looks rather posh as well so I'm going to take this to the machine and stitch the seam down and when I'm top stitching on quilt fabric I like to increase my stitch length to approximately 2.8 to three so at the moment I'm on 2.8 but of course it's you know it's a personal thing it's up to you but sometimes people ask me for my recommendations so 2.8 is mine it's also worth it's also worth when you're um, when you are when you're sewing seams down every now and again it's a good idea just to lift up your work and check that your seams haven't snapped back together or they're folded the other way and um, I'm going at a, at quite a clip here because well as you can imagine I've made quite a few of these purses lately so I'm quite happy with sewing somewhat fast but when you're top stitching absolutely nothing wrong with slowing right down and going at a speed that you are comfortable with so that's one side done and now I'm just going to top stitch the other side I'll just do a last check to make sure that that seam is lying down nicely before the needle goes in It's really nice stitching down the bottom edge seam on the lining as well because it's quite easy when you're making bags to have a, a baggy lining and you know the seams don't quite 
don't quite sit nicely as maybe they do on the outside and I know I've been guilty of it before you know if I I'm making a bag more for photography than for selling I might not pay as much attention to the lining but actually when you do it's really really nice because you know when you um, let's see if I can when you go to the trouble of putting as much time into your lining as you do your outer then inside I'm not sure if you can see look how flat the seam is on the lining at the bottom edge as well so it's worth going to the trouble thank you attractor that's a lovely thing for you to say I'm really enjoying myself <laughs> okay right so stop gabbing about that I will just do my securing stitch on the bottom edge seam okay right there so one very neat looking bottom edge seam and then to finish off the lining it is a simple case of the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch along both both side edges I'm going to leave these cutout bits alone for now I'm not I'm just going to stitch along the straight side edges only and I'm and, and this I'm entirely leaving alone so I'm not doing anything with that right now Oh, bless you, Janet. That's a lovely thing to say. <laughs> well, that's only because you're here. I would, you know, it means everything that you came in. I mean, I, I do talk to myself a lot, um, but it's much, much nicer to talk to you lot. <laughs> okay, so remember, it is a quarter of an inch seam. Let's line that up nicely. And you definitely want to be doing securing stitches at the beginning and start of your stitches on this purse because later on there is there is as you can imagine a fair amount of manipulating and we don't want the we don't want to risk our seams coming undone because of that manipulating that we're doing with our purse you'll see what i mean uh, later um, okay. So that's the second side. Okay, so that's bottom edge done, side edges done, and at this point you need to flatten the seam as best as you can um, probably at home you might you, you might use a um, tailor's ham or a sleeve ham and then iron this the side seams open um, but I'm going to stay sitting here and use my trusty seam roller on both the side seams okie dokie and with that done all we need to do now is to box the corners and that's really really easy so I'm going to cut these threads now because we're getting into a bit of a spaghetti. I tend to be one of those sewers that leaves the thread tails at the very end because somehow I think it's faster, but it never is faster. It's just a pain because all of the threads just end up into a spaghetti. And when actually what I should do is just cut the threads as I go along. I tell myself this every time and I never do it. But I tell you what, it certainly makes demonstration tricky when what you're picking up is a plate of bolognese because of all the spaghetti rather than a nice clean looking piece of sewing. Okay, so I now want to make a nice bag bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the bottom edge seam and I'm going to make it align perfectly with the side edge seam. And I do that by squashing 
can you see that I'm squashing the box cut out together and I'm going to take as long as I need to take to make sure that these seams meet each other beautifully. That's, that's the difference between a flat bottom that sits as it should and looks really, really professional. So see, you can see clearly on the outer that the bottom edge seam matches beautifully with the side edge seam. And how nice, I mean, it's such a visible thing. So it's really important to take, it's not hard to get it right. It's not hard to get them to meet. What is harder is being patient and taking the time it needs to make sure that they align. Well, that's not hard either, but don't be impatient. Take your time to make sure that the bottom edge seam matches perfectly with the side edge seam and you will get a flat bottom corner that looks like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that my side edge seam matches really nicely with my bottom edge seam and I'm going to stick a pin in it because I don't want it to move whilst sewing and I will repeat and you know, you know and if you're superstitious just check inside as well you can you can actually have a look and see if that side edge seam meet, meets perfectly with a bottom edge seam right guys I've just seen the FedEx man has come so I'm gonna have to open the door to him in a second and the dog is going to bark as well and the dog is going to want to give the FedEx man a kiss I'll make sure that their romantic interlude is as short as possible and then I'll be back with you meanwhile take time matching that side edge seam with the bottom seam when I'm gone it's any minute now you'll hear the dog barking See, I can see what's going on from, I can look down at the road from my window. It's quite handy, actually. He's just arrived with a bunch of interfacing and supplies for the shop. So I cannot, I cannot not let him in. <coughs> there he goes. <laughs> Back in two seconds. Okay, that's that. <laughs> Linz asks, what about a small artist palette knife to push the fabric into the frame? That might work really well. I don't know. I don't know how stiff it is. If there's any, if there's any bend in it at all, you don't, that's not going to work very well for you. What you want is something that's, um, that's stiff and strong, but a little bit flat and ideally slightly sharp because it's going to help it's going to help grip the fabric so if it's kind of blunt it's not going to do a good job but I can talk more about it when the time comes Sue says that was quick yes uh, well we we always get the same DPD man and the same FedEx man so and we have done for years so often they'll they can just leave and drop and they all, all know about Scoob so it is often quick to be honest hey Diane <laughs> thanks for coming oh it's very sweet of you right now where were we okay yes taking time to match our bottom edge seam to a side edge seam and then now then when we've done that we're going to just sew across the raw edge here uh, with a quarter of an inch and because it's fabric um, I'm going to stitch in forward and reverse because traditionally um, bottom edge corners are high stress areas so stitching in uh, two lines of stitches just add, adds a little bit more strength to that high stress area um, and also when you when you're stitching across the seam sometimes the side edge seam 
can kind of flip upwards. So before you get to this, that happening, it's absolutely no problem stopping your foot and then forcing that seam back down because ideally you, you want your seam to stay. So the bottom edge seam is already stitched down. That's nice. But this, the side edge seam is not. So we want to avoid um, the seams popping up again. Because if you don't, then you know, you, you're adding bulk. And sewing is all about trying to reduce bulk. Well, as in life, really, reducing bulk um, wherever we sew. Okay, so quarter edge seam. Forward and reverse. Okay, and then just do a nice security stitch at the end. Okay, and then do the other side. Just do a last minute check that those seams meet each other. Mm. Yep, look, see, already the first seam that's about to go under the foot wanted to pop up. Don't ignore that. Make sure that you lift up your foot and then press it down again. Okay, lovely jubbly. I'm going to take my pins out. Going to cut the threads off. And at this point, we want to um, Sue says, my best friend is a dentist and I'm going to see what she has in her surgery. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Put a pink handle on it or something, then, then it's a sewing tool. <laughs> well, hemostats are, um, now am I imagining it, but hemostats come from a uh, medical setting, don't they? I need to get myself a pair of those. I still don't. I still don't have a pair of hemostats. I usually just rely on a pair of um, beauty tweezers, to be honest with you. But I keep meaning to get some. Okay, so that is our box bottom stitched in, and for neatness, what we want to do now is to carefully. So I know it's a, only a quarter of an inch seam, but carefully, you want to try and reduce that by approximately a half. Oh, Scoob, don't get caught in the wires, my love. <laughs> oh, he's finished his chew. There you go. That's that's why he's here. God bless him. Um, and reduce, trim off the seam on the other side. And that's that. That That is, that is basically the lining done. And the PU side is done in exactly the same way. And I'm going to stitch that with you now, but with these fundamental differences so we're now going to stitch the PU side so like I say before is that really a left-handed sewing machine asks Janet no it's not when a bunch of us have found John has found and Becky has found that when you're on Facebook everything gets reversed around so if I put this pattern up you'll see it's backwards so no, it's not, a le I'm a righty, I'm a right, and I'm not particularly ambidextrous either. So it's just something that Facebook does. Okay, right, so we're now going to sew our outer, our PU side in exactly the same way that we sold, did the fabric side, but because it's PU, we need to do things a little bit differently. So the first thing that we need to do is before we do any sewing and we forget and by the way, the 80 forward slash 12 needle is brilliant for PU, so stick with that. 
is we're going to elongate our stitch length to three. No, we don't we don't want to be stitching PU with our typical 2.4, 2.5 stitch length because you will perforate the PU, making it very easy for the PU to rip. So if we elongate our stitches, that helps maintain the strength of the PU. So PU pieces right sides together and pop some clips in the top edge to make sure they don't escape from each other and I'm going to ah yes he missed that yeah the American name for the oh it's archery forceps every day is a school day Oh, thank you, Janet. Yes, this this is this is a lovely bag making machine. It's um, it's a great craft sewing machine. I mean, obviously, it would be great for dressmaking, but it's also great for things like lampshade making and curtain making and um, cushion making. Anything that's kind of a bit on the big and the wide side. And it's got this fancy light as well. Anyway, I'll stop going on about the machine. So. As before, I'm only going to stitch along the bottom edge seam with a quarter of an inch and I'm stitching with a stitch length of three because I'm stitching on PU. Please forgive me if I'm not answering your questions, folks. It's because I don't, I want this video to be, to have a good, I'll say this a few times, I want this video to have a reasonable flow so that anyone who's going to watch afterwards doesn't need to scroll through too much chat. Now, as we're sewing through PU, we don't sew securing stitches, either a knot stitch or forward and reverse with PU. We need to leave long thread tails at the beginning and the end of our stitches. And then after stitching, we need to knot the thread tails together. Because again, if we do forward and reverse stitches or securing stitches on PU, we'll weaken the fabric. So I've made sure that I've got a long construction and bobbin thread at the beginning and the same for the other side. And the lovely thing about this PU is it does not stick to the machine, nor the right side or the wrong side stitches to the machine. And it sews together really easily. So it's, it really, it's not thick at all, but it's easily thick enough. So whenever I sew with this PU, I never interface it. I will always, I, I will always put some fleece on the lining to give it s s some squish but the PU itself doesn't need any further strengthening, which just helps with minimizing that bulk. And it's plenty, it's plenty strong enough. So, really nice to use. So now that I have stitched the bottom edge together, you can see I've left my long thread tails there. I'm just going to quickly double knot those thread tails together and um, when you are doing this make sure that you do give the thread tails a little bit of a tug I mean I don't want you to snap the thread tails obviously but if you don't give those thread tails at the start and end of your stitches a little bit of a tug you may risk the um, start and end stitches being a little bit loopy and a little bit loose on your sewing so you want to avoid that Yes, yeah, so make sure that you throw, you tug those thread tails so that they're snug, but obviously you must not snap the thread either because, well, snapping the thread's just a bit of a disaster, really, because that means you've got to unpick and stitch again. And um, trying to stitch through the original holes is just really great fun. Yes, yeah, so fun, so fun, you don't want to do it. So yeah, just just be firm, but be gentle as in life, be firm, but be gentle. Okay, so I've now knotted the thread tails and this is where, this is my, where my wondrous seam roller is going to come in again, because I'm going to peel open the seam 
and I'm going to flatten it. Now you, you could, you could if you really wanted to, place an ironing cloth over this and iron it down, but it seems a bit, A, it seems a bit overkill and it's just, I don't know, it's, it's when this works brilliantly and I, you know, I, you, you see I'm not standing up, you know, why, why, should, I'm, I'm not going to, my iron isn't even on, it's not even on the table, so, you know, I've got this instead, so give this, um, give this a go, and, you know, because, because this PU is perfectly pliable, pliable yet strong, and there's no interfacing on the back of it, this is lying down nicely, Okay, right, so it is somewhat flat. I can now turn it round to the right side and do the same. And now that I have seam rollered those seams down, before I do any sewing, I'm going to elongate my stitch length for top stitching on PU. Um, some people say for PU three and a half to four. So because this is not a sizable project, it's not really big. The top stitching is is purely decorative. So I don't I don't want a four because it's not going to look in proportion and delicate for this purse. So you know this is this is a kind of a dainty size. So top stitching on PU today is going to be stitch length of three and a half but if I was sewing a big beach tote or um, a big PU beach tote or a big um, holiday bag then and this and also there's lots of um, heavy lining and lots of foam then I would elongate and top stitch to four but today we're going to stick to three and a half so do that now and take it to the machine. And when you take take your work to the machine, make sure that your seams are lying open. And like I say, even this right side, even this little strip of right side PU doesn't stick. There's, there's no, you can see there are no post-it notes on my machine. It's going to glide through just fine. So you take all of the time you need to get the positioning right and then okay and then drop the needle again make sure before you sew with the PU you've got your long thread tails at the very beginning of the stitches they basically your long thread tails need to be long enough for you to be able to grab the tails and comfortably tie them together in a double knot drop your needle last minute check that your seams are still peeled apart before you start sewing and away you go oh yeah and by the way I didn't mention this before you've probably noticed um, that I'm using my walking foot and anyone who knows me will know that I really wang on about the beauty of walking feet because not only do walking does walking feet make life easier when you're doing a multitude of fabrics it helps with stickiness it helps with thickness it helps with layering and obviously I've just switched from using lining fabric to using PU and I'm still using the same foot so really when I say that my walking foot is on my machine pretty much 95% of the time I mean it so I'm just reaching the end and not doing any securing stitches uh 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 and I've left a long thread tail at that end and then go back to the machine and do the other side
I mean, if you're super, 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 shall we say, beady-eyed and mega fussy, and I don't say mega fussy as in that's a negative thing to say, but you, you're the sort of person that notices everything, you could, if you wanted, take the trouble to see if your starting stitch aligns perfectly with the last stitch. Now, I, I'm not going to do that because we haven't got the time for that sort of thing. But I'm just saying, if you wanted to, you could. And I'm, every now and again, I'll just lift up my work to make sure that my the seam that I'm stitching down is perfectly flat, hasn't moved. Because ideally, we don't want to be unpicking stitches in PU. It's not the end of the world. And as Bex will tell you, there are tips and tricks for healing the holes in PU because when you make holes in PU, generally that is that, the hole is there for good. But there are things that you can do like getting, um, like heating it in the sun or getting a um, hairdryer on it to heal the holes. But actually once the integrity is lost through making a hole, it, you know, it is large part there for good really. So now that I have made my stitches, you can see they looking nice, looking nice people. Look at the sheen on that. Mm -mm. Jan wants to know what machine I'm using. I'm using Memory Craft 9450QCP by Janumi. Angela wants to know, could you put a twin needle in for top stitching so it's even? I think you could. I think that if you've got the spacing completely perfect, you absolutely... Do you know what I would do? Is I would just get two pieces, stitch them together and experiment. Um, I don't see why you couldn't. I've never tried it before, but I reckon you could. So there are two, two bunches of thread tails here. Now this is this is going to be cut off eventually. So rather than going to the trouble of knotting twice because there's two sets of thread tails, I'm just going to go ahead and knot these two sets together because it's slightly quicker and it's not really going to make much odds to the finished purse anyway. We just want to prevent those seam stitches from coming undone. Um, the ugly thread tail spaghetti is going to be cut away, so you're not going to see it. But if we don't, if we don't secure off those um, tail ends, then we risk our stitches from coming undone, and we don't want that. Okay, now same as before, we're now just going to stitch along the side seams Wendy wants to know why long thread tails get sucked in and end up as loops on the back of my sewing um i think that's that that's true of a lot of machines wendy um certainly the older models of machines that i had they used to do that all of the time. I think the later models, they might have some technology to prevent that from happening, but it's good practice to hold on to your tails anyway as you begin sewing. Um, but the short answer is, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oh, now, now I'm doing some construction sewing with my PU. I need to take the stitch length down from three and a half to three. I almost forgot there oh, and got to make sure that I've got my long thread tails at the top side and then repeat Okay. 
and do the knotting thing again. Yes, I know. I know it's a little bit tedious. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's the, the knotting the tails together is not my favourite, but I think you know for the fact that you've ended up making a frame purse with PU, that does make it worth it. Let's knot the three other tails together. So you see it, you know, stitching, stitching the fabric purse of the together takes no time at all. It's pretty, it's pretty quick and simple. I like to think that um, a lot of sewing isn't really, really difficult. It's not, you know, it's not outside the realms of going on a few YouTube videos or looking in books to figure out how to do something. I think actually the trickiness comes in really slowing down to match your seams, really slowing down to trim down your seam allowances or to notch curves and things. Um, you know, and then, then, but then once you've done that, you make life so much easier for yourself and you end up with a result that you're really, really happy with. I think that's why I like origami. I love paper folding. So you can't you can't make those models effectively unless you match each match edges beautifully, unless you really turn out those corners neatly. It it relies on it relies on precision. And funnily enough, sewing doesn't rely on precision in the same way. You can still throw things together on a sewing machine and sometimes that's fun and it suits but sometimes when you do take the time to you know really slow down really match perfectly iron your seams down at every go you know the results that you end up with can be sensational and there's no hurry is there Unless, of course, maybe your production sewing and it's Christmas time. And <laughs> but other than that, other than that, there's no hurry. So, I have seam rolled my side seams open. I've got a little bit of a spaghetti here, so I'm just going to cut those. I like the colour of the PU as well, Catherine. Thank you. Actually, this colourway that I'm working on is going to be another kit available in the shop very soon. I haven't decided on a name for it yet, but it's probably going to have the word plum in it and maybe the word peony in it as well. <laughs> so as before, I'm taking super care to match the it's a little bit dark in there sorry but I'm tr taking care to match the side seam with the bottom edge seam and I can't I can't pin these seams down like I did with my fabric purse so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some sewing clips just on the triangle just on the sloped edges there just to make sure that my um, seam matching doesn't go awry and then yeah see that's how I'm going to keep them keep them in place and I'm going to do the same to the other side again making absolutely sure that those that that side edge seam is peeled open Louise says she loves sewing because it's all about perfection and enjoyment. You stayed up at 4am watching Joe Carter. Brilliant. It's absorbing, isn't it? It's really, um, it's really, really nice just taking the time to get those edges to match and just being super satisfied that looking at your work, have, when it's all done and that you can see, you can see that, you know, 
getting you know making that flat bottom making those edges meet each other beautifully because people have said to me my the flat bottoms on my bag always look wonky they just don't work and it's it's not that you can't do it it's not it's just that maybe you haven't read or you haven't been taught to yet to just take take ages to match your seams and you know and there's nothing wrong with taking ages taking ages is good and when you're sewing that's good it's it's not a race the thing that you want to make isn't going to go anywhere the idea will still be there tomorrow try your hardest to concentrate on the thing that you're doing and to you know give it the time give it the time that it needs and you'll be so you'll be so pleased with yourself afterwards i mean forget who you're giving it for to you know you might be making it as a present but the lovely thing about giving something to somebody and you being happy with it means that you both got something out of it. And there's nothing wrong with that, is there? So, right, so just do a, another another super uptight check that my seams match each other before I sew across. Leaving long thread tails at start and end because we're working with PU double checking that my construction length is still at three and it is and because it's PU I'm not going to stitch in forward and reverse along the bottom edge seams like I did with my lining be because it's PU so we can't stitch in forward and reverse so we're just going to pass it through the machine once leaving long thread tails the thread tails are super important always make sure they are long and keeping to your quarter a quarter of an inch seam throughout okay lovely lovely now, you know where you know that we've been tying off our thread tails a lot whilst working with PU. Now, I'll say that the very most important part of doing a neat job of tying those thread tails is at this very point because we want to make sure. So remember I said earlier on that when you pull the thread tails on your PU stitches, you need to pull them taut so that there's no loose stitching. If you don't pull tightly enough, you will see gapping just here. So this, this part of the purse, this stitching here is this stitching here. Now, if I don't, if I don't pull these thread tails tightly enough before knotting, you are going to get hideous looking gapping here and you're going to see holes because the stitches were loose before you tied that double knot does that make sense that's really really important because it's such a visible part of the purse that we want to make sure that the start and end stitches those those threads are nice and taut and they're pulling that fabric together strongly and beautifully so obviously we pull tight without snapping the thread but we pay super attention to doing a good job here so just so rather than go yank yank just, what i like to do is just give a few firm just give a few short firm tugs before you start stretching that thread and snapping because it mustn't snap on any account so when you've tied that first knot you can gently tug again make sure that everything is nice and home and secure Anna wants to know if it's the same procedures if you use leather yes yes Anna exactly the same any fabric that's not woven so that would include PU that would include leather that would include suede that would include vinyl gl glitter vinyl anything that's not got a warp and a weft these are the same procedures 
You might use a different size needle, you might use different length stitches or even a different kind of thread, but the sewing techniques are the same. Okay, so. So forgive me, I'm just taking a little bit longer to tie off my thread tails because before, as I said, I want to make sure that I prevent any gapping on my finished purse. So I don't want to see any gaps in my stitches on the bottom edge seam because it just looks really ugly. I mean, it's not that the stitching will come undone because you've knotted the thread tails together, but it's just something that's really visible. It will irk you. Um, so we want to avoid irking ourselves. Okay. And this is another reason to use, I mean, I, I, I personally don't have a favorite all purpose thread. I tend to just use Coates or Gutterman in whatever color I've got. I mean, my favorite top stitching thread I do have, my favorite is Orofil 40 weight, which if I have it, it's a real luxury, love it. But um, just for general construction sewing, I'll use any branded nylon thread. I'll, I'll never use the cheap stuff though ever ever you know I and actually I do have a box of cheap threads that I've gotten from giveaways or even been given it and, and, and I don't use it because it doesn't hold up your projects well and you can imagine if you know if you can imagine if while knotting my thread tails together and I've used cheap nylon thread you'd get snapping all over the place so that's another reason why, why when you are sewing always use a branded all-purpose nylon thread I don't you know personally I don't think it matters which company but yeah branded is definitely best okay looking good nice 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 okay so at this point if there's any if there are loads of long thread tails just milling around it's safe it's safe to trim them now because you've stitched all of the construction seams on your purse and as before we're going to trim down we're going to trim down this seam a bit to approximately half um, and, and obviously avoiding cutting through the stitching nice Okay, so that is basically your lining and your outer stitched together. Nylon wants to, poly, Laurie wants to know if I'm using nylon or polyester. I'm using polyester, Laurie. So now we've stitched our outer, see, super easy. Just turn right side out. See, this is um, this is what I'm talking about, folks. We've got a we've got a seam from the bottom that runs perfectly into the side, and we don't we don't have any gaps in the stitches at either side of the bottom edge corner. Okay, now the next thing to do is to stitch the lining and the outer together. I only want to know if you could use cork to make this purse. I think you could. I think um, I think if you made sure that you didn't have a, uh, a thick lining, so I would go no thicker than quilt weight for the lining to reduce that bulk. And I would definitely, definitely do a spot test to see if the glue reacts with the cork. That's something you've got to be very careful about. So I, I, I can see that it would definitely react with some vinyls, you know, and, and I thought, and before I used the PU, it was just a simple test to see if what the glue would do because there's solvent in the glue 
and you can you can't ever be sure what's gonna the solvent is going to do with the fabric until you test it so make sure that you do test on a cork sample before you go ahead and make your cork purse now we're going to stitch these two together and we do that by putting the outer purse right sides out into the wrong side out lining like so and we're going to make sure that the side seams of our outer and the side seams of our lining match really nicely and I'll show you this where we're going to stitch so we're going to stitch these two purses together but only only along the sloped edge not along not along here we're not going to be stitching along here at all we're just going to be stitching along here and you're only going to be stitching along here approximately an inch or so either side of the side seam so it's going to be approximate a line that's going to be approximately two inches long and it's going to be um, about an eighth of an inch from the top edge the reason being is because the reason we stitch here is because on your finished purse can you see that bit of stitching just there there's a gap in the frame at the hinge and we want that gap where, where we see that gap in the fringe we'd like to see some nice tidy stitching you don't want the seams to be you don't want to see the raw edges of the sides so that's basically the stitching that we're going to be doing now we're tucking those raw edge seams inside the purse so that when our on when we see our finished purse and we look through the hinge we've got some nice tidy seams which are tucked away so when i say approximately an inch and you're wondering don't be so vague i hate it when they're vague tell me exactly what millimeters it needs to be as you can see the gap itself between it between the hinge is small it's quite small so you know when i if an approximately an inch is about from here to here i say an inch just to be safe because it's comfortable it's definitely going to cover all bases but actually the size of the gap in of itself is approximately a centimeter but an inch is a nice safe you know approximately an inch will, will do the will do fine so approximately an inch either side of the seam in one continuous v-shaped line ensuring that we don't go um, more than an eighth of an inch down from the top edge so there's a little bit of matching to do at this point this is where sewing clips are super handy because we don't pin through PU and we're going to clip our purses together don't worry after after I've done this stitching I'll show you know, I'll bring it back to the camera and you'll see exactly where I stitched And we're going to do both sides, obviously. So these side edges are very straight and very angular. So it it really makes all of the difference and it's worth the time to ensure that the edges of your outer purse and your lining purse match beautifully and do you know what if if you're finding if you're finding that your lining purse is probably a little bit wibbly wobbly or the fleece is a little bit skew with there's absolutely no no problem with cutting cutting the lining to ensure that it meets your outer beautifully you show it who's boss cut that fabric down if that fabric is not behaving itself take the scissors to it and put it back in its place trim it trim it down trim it down not the pu probably because the pu 
Chances are the PU is cut beautifully because it doesn't move around on the cutting, but maybe your fleece cutting went astray, or maybe your lining fabric went astray when you were cutting it. More cut the lining and the fleece than your PU. Okay, so. I've got my sewing clips in situ, so I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much going to sew between my sewing clips one eighth of an inch down. So I'll sew, 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 and then I'll stop here and pivot, and I'll pivot literally in the side seam and then stitch back up. And we're still sewing on PU, so our stitch length is at three. And I'm still leaving the long thread tails at the beginning and the end. And I'm going to I'm going to keep my finger on the um, lining side seam because I don't want that to pop shut as I sew. Again, remember not to do your securing stitches or sewing forward and reverse because you're sewing on PU. So as I sew down one side and I get towards that central seam, I've now reached the central seam, I can pivot with the needle in the down position and then rearrange my purse so that I can sew up the other side. Okay, that's one side done. And left long thread tails on that side as well. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same with the other side. And you'll find that the PU the PU side seams, they want to pop shut as well. So all of the time when you're sewing this or anything really, and you want your side seams to be lying open, check all of the time. It's a bit like cooking. When you're seasoning something, they say the best way to season food is to season as you go along. Don't just dump a load of salt and pepper in at the end, just season as you go. And when you sew with your seams, check that they're open as you go. Okay, so my clips are just getting in the way a bit, so I'll take those out. I often do find that another hand, when you're sewing, would be so handy. There you go, we're in. If you do find that sometimes it's a battle to get, so when, you, when you've got your seams matching perfectly and you've got your seams open and everything's looking amazing and you're gripping your project for dear life because you want to keep those seams open and then by the time you've got everything under the foot, it's all gone awry, everything's misaligned itself. Don't ever ignore that and just hope for the best and that somehow you'll sew it and then everything will align again. It won't. Just take the thing away from under the foot and then rejiggle and manipulate as is necessary. It's just worth the hassle, believe me. Okay, so I'll just reach that side seam and then literally when I'm in the side seam with my needle, I pivot again with the needle in the down position and then sew back the other side. Okay, and go back to the thread tying again. So I'll actually I'll leave the thread ties down so it's going to help you see where I've sewn. Now can you see where I have sewn? So I've kind of, I've started here and and I, I dropped, at the beginning of the stitching, I was pretty much at the very top edge of the purse. And I've drifted in gently. And then by the time you get here, I'm at a one eighth. So I've started at the top and I've drifted down a little bit 
until by the time I get to the centre I'm at one eighth and then I've stitched back up and then drifted pretty much back to the top edge of the purse. So if you try and aim to do the same it's just nice and neat. Don't worry too much if this stitching is a little bit wobbly or, or whatever because it's not because remember the only part that's actually going to be visible is one centimeter entirely across so half a centimeter either side of the seam is all that you're going to see on the finished purse so don't don't freak out too much about how this stitching looks so make sure that you tie your thread tails again so folks I'm going to I'm going to be here and finish off the actual the physical sewing of the purse how about, I think what I'll do is I'll take a comfort break so uh, when I finish when I finish all of the sewing and there's no more sewing to do what I'll do is I'll grab a biscuit take a comfort break and then restart the video again in about I'll, I'll give I'll, I'll take five minutes I'll take five minutes to just to get myself together and then I'll do the gluing so this video will be in two parts whereby the first part was the construction and the sewing of the purse and the second part is purely the gluing only which are actually is probably nice to have the option for people who are comfortable with a sewing purse but the glue freaks them right out and all they want to see is the gluing so that's what that's what I'll do I'm getting quite close to finishing off the sewing of the purse now and then what I'll do is take a break for five minutes and then come back here with glue and windows open <laughs> So we're literally, I mean, I think you could see that if, if I wasn't, if I wasn't gabbing, you know, and taking the time to show you the techniques, I think you'll agree that the actual sewing part of this purse is really, really quick. So, I mean, I, I, I like to think that I named this purse the easy peasy purse for a good reason. Okay, so that's my thread tails knotted together securely and I'll just give those a trim and then after this we do one line of top stitching and then it's toilet time. Okay, right, so this is, this is, this is a nice bit. We're going to turn the purse right sides together now and that's really simple because there are two gaps two gaps either side of the purse now so hi Valeria from Brazil hi Helfa Denby oh this is excellent thanks for joining me cool oh thank you Janice that's really nice thank you for calling me a great teacher thank you I really enjoy it I love it okay so I'm just kind of turning everything oh by the way by the way do you remember at the very very beginning I asked you to um, trim the trim the fleece at the sloped edges do you remember so we had this is this was our purse pattern and at the very beginning I asked you to trim the fleece just from this edge and a tiny bit from this edge well the the reason why I ask you to trim the fleece down should become apparent now because when you are when you're turning the purse right side out it's quite it's potentially quite bulkalicious um, here so that trimming the fleece back will help ensure that you get a nice not too bulky chunky seam at your side seam of your purse so just manipulate and zhuzh and get your fingers in there and roll those, roll those seams. 
and because it's because it's PU because it's PU we don't want to really be I mean by all means if this if you are making a, a fully fabric version then now would be a good time so see that see that seam that we've stitched looks nice doesn't it and that's that's what we're aiming for I mean we've we've basically yes I know we've gone to the trouble of making a lot of this side seam look really nice when actually the main event is just the width of my fingertip here but definitely too much is better than not enough so take the time to um, match those edges because the next thing we need to do is top stitch around the whole thing so I'm going to get my seam roller and I'm going to um, flatten those seams at the side seams where we stitched those seams in If you really wanted to, if you really wanted to, you could, if you were careful, and especially if you had an iron with a fine tip, iron on, iron on the lining side, and maybe if you want to be careful, iron over an ironing cloth to get this nice and crisp, if you wanted to. Um, but I, I, I never do, because do remember, what is visible is only one centimeter long, and as long as as long as the the lining isn't obviously riding over the outer it's no big deal plus also another thing you need to remember is all of these edges are going to be concealed anyway they're going to be concealed inside a purse frame now i know that's no excuse for shoddy sewing what i'm saying is don't tie yourself up in knots about it so try and get a tidy result but if it's not it's going to be hidden inside a frame no biggie okay so when you've when you're quite happy with the seams being pretty flat here you need to use clips to hold the lining and the outer layers together now if you if you find that it's uneven or the fleece is a little bit fuzzy trim that fleece off or trim that lining off leave the PU alone because I can see eyeballing obviously the PU is a perfectly beautiful straight edge don't need to disturb that but if the fabric isn't as beautifully straight as the lining now's the time to trim any stray fleece or strip or stray fabric away so that your lining and your outer edges match each other beautifully i am beginning to sound like barbara woodhouse i think by getting everything to match beautifully <laughs> who remembers barbara woodhouse uh i think barbara woodhouse would have helped with scoob <laughs> she was a, a fabulous dog trainer who had a way about her you know I imagine she was I imagine she'd be quite strict but really warm and lovely oh thank you Debbie that's kind of you to say that this is a good tutorial thank you so much I find I find these purses quite relaxing to make because well basically because I've made so many of them but you know it's just you never get you never get tired of how nice and how polished they look when they're done and it's one of those you know in reasonably instant gratification things that you've sewn something and then you pop some shiny metal on it they're always welcome as gifts so yeah i really do like making these guys and sorry it's taken so long for there to be a tutorial on them did you know i think i'm pretty sure that I was the first person to blog about how to use purse frames back in 2000 and I think 2005, 2006, I think I was the first person to blog about how to use glue in purse frames. So, you know, I'm quite proud of that.
Okay, so as you can see, <laughs> Lynn says, suit. So does Louise. <laughs> so does a trend. <laughs> She's awesome, wasn't she? Fantastic Barbara Woodhouse. You just don't get characters like that anymore, do you? <laughs> okay, so here is my. I love making them too. Yes. So, yes. So, so, so Suzanne Herbert agrees. Purse making with frames is instant gratification of the highest quality. <laughs> okay. So I have, I have clipped my lining and my outer together and I've taken care to ensure that the edges match nicely. Now, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch all the way around in a continuous circle. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to stitch across the side seam and I'm going to go back all the all the way around. And because I'm top stitching on PU again, I want to elongate my stitches to three and a half. And I'm not I'm going to leave long thread tails. Now, whatever you do, folks, remember that this one centimetre width of action that's going to be visible on our purse. We don't want to be starting or ending our stitches here because it's going to be visible. So we're going to start our top stitching in the middle here because it's just going to be stuffed inside a frame anyway. You're not going to see it. And by the way, these purse frames are about a centimetre deep. So in essence, you could zigzag along here, you can go wibbly along, you can pretty much do whatever you like as long as you do not go below one centimetre down from the top edge. But anyway, don't do not don't do that, don't be kamikaze just because you can. Try and stick to one eighth, one eighth of an inch from the edge going all the way round with a top, well, with a top stitch length of three and a half. And like I say, it, it doesn't matter too much how how beautiful or not your top stitching is on these straight edges. But when you get to the side seam here, which is going to be a visible one centimeter, slow right down. And you'll find that you your machine, even though we've used PU today and some fleece, you should be absolutely fine stitching through. You shouldn't need to slow down or hand crank it or anything like that. You'll find that the machine will should be able, no matter what machine you're using, should be able to take the thickness that is here because we also went to the trouble of taking some of the fleece away from the top edge of our um, lining. So, right, let's go in for it. And as I said before, I'm starting in one of the straight um, edges on along the top of the purse and I am stitching one eighth of an inch down okay and um, making sure I've got those long thread tails at the beginning My machine beeps a lot. I don't always know what ah, it's the um, bobbin thread going empty thing. But there's loads, there's loads of thread in my bobbin. It's super, this machine is super cash, super cautious with the bobbin thread warning thing. I mean, I, I do, I do ignore it a lot. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes to my detriment. But there you are. We, we've got to be kamikaze in some ways. So I'm going at a reasonable clip here because we haven't reached that, you know, all important side seam yet. But as I will, as I do reach it, I'm going to slow. Here I am. I'm going to slow right down now because if I'm lucky, that needle is going to hit the side seam and at that point I pivot with the needle in the down position and then lower my foot again and then go back up and then for those first few stitches on my best behavior 
and I'm making sure that they're really beautiful stitches and uh, I like to think they are um, now I've left the danger area so to speak and then I can just speed up again and you know just be a little bit faster because by now I'm thinking of that lovely orange marshmallow tea cake that's in my cupboard because teaching is um, hungry work and I'm gonna have a nice cup of tea with my tea cake so look the more I think about the tea cake the faster my sewing gets there's a definite correlation tea cake tea cake but as I reach the side seam on the other side I must stop thinking about tea cakes and slow right down again because those stitches are going to be visible on my finished purse and people will know I've been thinking about tea cakes if my stitches do not look neat there. Okay, so just super neat for the first few stitches and then tea cake time. Okay. right so I've stitched all I've stitched all around and I've nearly I've nearly met maybe I could have stitched a couple of stitches so I, I didn't I don't really want to begin stitching I don't want to end my stitches in the beginning of the in the beginning of the start of my stitches because that might perforate my PU fabric so what I want to do is I want to bring my needle as close as possible to the beginning of my stitches but without stitching into my beginning stitches if that makes sense and at this point I'm going to tie the threads together now if this was top stitching on a bag and it was just going to remain as top stitching and you're not you know and you're you're not putting anything on top I would go to the trouble of bringing the the, the construction thread and bringing it to the back of the lining and tying it together because you know I uh, you know you, ideally you don't you don't want to see knots on the right side of your bag but because this top stitching isn't actually going to be on show it's just going to be put into a frame it doesn't matter if I do a big old mother of a um, double knot here without bothering to pull the top thread to the back so I've done that now and and that's that there I've I've now I've now finished I've now finished sewing the purse see so th so the stitching um, you know I went I went awry a bit here doesn't matter it's all going to be hidden in the frame but I have taken care here because that's the business end Patricia wants to know would it be easier to stitch if you did free arm sewing yes it, it would Patricia it definitely would and I think if I wasn't if I wasn't doing a video usually I do have a free arm but I know that quite a few machines um, especially some of the more um, stronger machines they don't have a free arm so what I wanted to show you was that it's actually possible to stitch this without a free arm but given the choice yes I, I would use I would use a free arm um, the thing about this PU is it's still pliable enough to for you to be able to squash it around to give you access to using you know to getting your work under the foot so the nice thing about the yeah I know I yammer on about the PU that I stock a lot yeah obviously it makes sense to but I need need to emphasize it is very very home sewing machine friendly in all of the ways that you need it to be so yeah you don't free arm is nice but it's not you know it's not obligatory so yeah that is that is the purse sewn and the next thing to do is to glue it so I'm just going to stop the video here 
I'm going to grab my tea cake, have a cup of tea and do other things. And then I'll be back. Shall, shall I say, I will be back here at 20 to 1. Please, can you put, uh, Janet doesn't want to stop the flow. Oh, thank you, Janet. You don't want to stop the flow. Brilliant demo. So please, can you put onto the messages the model number of your sewing machine? I can't do Seymour in case something happens, but I'll read your message later, Janet. And then um, I'll, I think if there's any fundamental information, I can even put it all in a Word document and then link it to Box. And then you can just um, read that information for yourself when you're ready so i'll be i'll be back i'm just going to have a little break now i'll be back in um just over five minutes at 20 to 1 where i'll show you how to glue the purse into the frame and don't worry for anyone who um has missed anything or they came in late or they're just watching later i'll be putting this video 